What is good? We're back with a crack. That was weak. Let's go. We got top 24 Superflex Tight End Premium Rookie Draft Ranker. <laughs> Let's go. Can't stop till you get enough. <laughs> I can't stop. Um, at least let's get right into it because we yeah. ain't got time to play around. Uh, know, we already did this once. I have a deja vu. Our audio engineer was sleeping on the job. So we're in this for uh, part two. Leading off tier one with Superflex tight end premium rookie Who's rankings. Who's it going to be? It's spicy. It's B. John Robinson. Um, and we can go right into tier number two. We're going to go Anthony Richardson. I don't think there's a ton to talk about with Bijan, and I think Anthony Richardson has clearly stated that he is now the the two. Um, he stated in, in that. his own in his own tier. Just the yeah. you know, the market has spoken, um, yeah. and you know the upside is there. Um, and you know I think that I don't think the downsides. Uh, you know, any any less than the two quarterbacks that are going to be below him foreshadowing here. Um, so. Um, and looking at the FFD, and, and, and we're talking fantasy wise, obviously football wise, there's maybe a little more to be desired with Richardson. But we just saw with Fields last year, it can be a little shaky, and the system and and players around you can be a little shaky. And if you can put the team on your back with some ultra athleticism, which Richardson can, um, and he already has some some pretty, he's got some great natural ability. So Richardson number two, um, and our ADP right now, we have Bijan at one eleven. RB1 overall uh, in the drafts that we've been doing, which we've been doing a ton. And then we have Anthony Richardson coming in at 202 QB10. Uh, so they're kind of pretty close to each other, but definitely have separated from the rest of the guys in this rookie class as far as startup picks go. Um, and that's not the end all be all, but and we'll touch on that more as we go. Um, I, I did get my first Bijan. Uh, nice. Uh, uh, Requirement here, um, and and we were at the one two spot. So you know, not to say that Bijan goes one one every single time. We saw a guy trade into one one. He started kind of then angling for a trade back day of the draft, and when you when you start feeling like he's angling for a trade back, that might mean that maybe he's cool with getting Richardson. And we were kind of like, hey, unless this is going to be really cheap, we're going to sit here. I'm okay with either one. Obviously, I would take Bijan first, but he went Anthony Richardson. He had just traded Lamar away, basically for the pick and some other things. So, and he needed needed a quarterback help. So, once we started putting those pieces together, it was like, all right, man, we're about to get Bijan. But I have seen Anthony Richardson uh, go above Bijan, and of course, these rankings are to help the non degenerates who can wait a minute to do the appropriate timed rookie draft. Mm -hmm. uh, which I know it's it's heating back up a little bit, and we're we're, we're going to get your beaks back wet with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, some 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 rankings beach back wet to uh, say that three times <laughs> some rankings to help you out uh, through your draft here so uh, B. John Robinson tier by himself Richardson tier by himself tier number three we're gonna go Bryce Young and CJ Stroud I, I would put Young slightly ahead of Stroud just like them more coming out and if he was the size of a prototypical quarterback he he may be in a tier by himself or up there with Anthony Richardson because everything else we like can he get through the the, the the rigors of an NFL season and 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 play through you know I w TBD um, he's a, he's a really good uh, scrambler uh, I, th I don't know that uh, maybe enough people give him enough credit for his elusiveness now he's not necessarily going to run uh, but he'll keep his head up and deliver and, and he can kind of he's got some escape ability uh, and then Stroud you know he has some athleticism and we saw it a few times in college he was kind of reluctant to whip it out um, <laughs> You know, he did it at the right time, but, but he did it at the right time. And man, it was huge. Um, <laughs> but OK, <laughs> but uh, so I got young slightly ahead of Stroud. I do like kind of both landing spots. I know some people are super down on the Panthers or super down on the Houston. I like when it comes down to fantasy for me, obviously, God given talent is going to normally rise to the crop if you want to put in the, the work. But what's also going to be, you know, is Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, if he goes to the Jaguars a few years ago, I, I'm not sure. But he went to the right guy in the right system and got the right development. Bryce Young going to go get Frank Reich and the system that they're putting in there and the and the um, coaching staff that they've implemented. I, I've got a lot of faith in it. I really like it. And then, you know, 
CJ Stroud's getting a lot of the 49ers staff um, and oh, that system, which, you know, everybody wants to test, say it's obviously not Kyle Shanahan, but it's people who have been in that system. And we've seen people go elsewhere and have pretty good success with it. Um, but great success. We know D'Amico can coach the hell out of a defense. He wanted to go there. He went right back in and traded for a middle linebacker that he can run the defense kind of through kind of by proxy, get himself on the field through a position that he can view it through his eyes. So, you know, again, like that staff, and, uh, you know, I like the, the wide receivers aren't quite set around either one of those guys yet, but there's some parts and pieces. And as we move forward, I think that'll grow. Um, and I think both of these guys will show enough year one that they won't drop terribly far in rankings and, and, and could even, you know, move up a little bit right now. Well, they're sitting Bryce Young's at 212 and Strauss at 38. That, right. They've fallen all offseason because they were like middle second round picks at the they, beginning. They, they fell like before the from after the draft but they've steadied out they haven't really been falling anymore since like we kind of wrapped up the draft and everybody kind of settled in so that's good to see we kind of figured out where they're at um, I think probably I still don't have much of them on my team when I'm when I'm in these mocks they just go too early like it's still too much and I think they're, they are going to fall because there's not a, a bunch of greatness around them and they're going to probably struggle some. And I think for Bryce Young, if he can just make it through the whole year and play every game, that would be a huge success for him. It doesn't even, he doesn't have to come through. It doesn't, but, but when they don't perform well, their ADP is going to slide a little bit. And it, I, I just feel like they're too high. Why I don't I know. It's, I don't know if it's going to be a game by game slide for their ADP. I think if there's any good, I think it just stays stable. I um, think by the end of the year, you know, if, if yeah, I, I don't, I don't see much of a slip. It'd have to be God awful. I, I think, uh, I think they'll hold pretty strong. Their first round picks, high picks. I mean, you didn't see Lance's or Baker's or, you know, Darnold's. Like, those all stood pretty tall for at least a season. At least one season. Um, you know, and, and where you were wrong on a lot of those, yes. Um, but um, I like both Stroud and Young. I, I don't really hate it. But um, so sorry. The next tier would be Gibbs and JSN for me. I got Gibbs slightly over JSN, but I could wake up tomorrow and put JSN over Gibbs all, all day long. You know, Gibbs high draft capital and, and the running back and, and a, a very fun uh, toy there. And, and, and again, in a system that we trust, but how long is that? Or at least I trust. I, I like where Ben Johnson's head's at. You would think that, that he gets drafted there with the idea of, hey, we're going to use him. But, you know, Ben Johnson doesn't seem long uh, to stay and, and was already on a hot uh, on a head coaching, uh, you know, list this season and kind of said turned it down. But, you know, I don't know how many times you turn down a head coaching position, um, but so, you know, like Gibbs, and, and if, if you're more of a receiver guy, no problem taking JSN. Uh, you can see in the startup uh, ADP here that uh, Gibbs has already uh, jumped one spot ahead of Stroud. So if we're talking startup, Gibbs and Stroud similarly rated, and, and Bryce, you know, almost a full round up on, on those guys. Um, so, you know, if you said, hey, I, I, I want to take the guesswork out of the the – uh, and you were feeling a little bit more like Jason is like, hey, I think these ADPs might go down a little bit. I think Gibbs is ADP at the, is going to stay unless he gets injured. I think his ADP stays exactly where it is, even if he doesn't have a bunch of great games as well. Like he's just young, explosive. I think there'll be enough highlight plays to keep him up there. JSN, I think basically the same thing. I don't see it really fluctuating that much so for me Bryce Young and CJ Stroud uh, I would acquire I, I would probably be looking to turn them into something I feel a little bit more comfortable with but uh, and I have them ranked up there because they're the quarterbacks and we're playing super flex so got them slightly above these guys because those guys aren't necessarily earmarked to be they're not Bijan basically you know um, so if you said hey I don't want to get Bryce Young and like for me I would trade down to like a Daniel Jones and and get try to get something plus from Bryce Young or whatever. Uh, but if you don't want to do that and you said, hey, man, I just want to take Gibbs or JSN ahead of those guys, I, I couldn't really argue with you uh, a ton. But that's this is my personal feelings and how I would go through this draft. Um, so on the next round of guys, I got Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, and Quentin Johnston. Um, in that order, um, I think Jordan Addison is, is – nobody's going to be shocked that if he's the number one – uh, rookie wide receiver the the targets are there they want to throw a lot in in minnesota um kirk's you know a la a joke of a butt of everybody's joke but is is very very serviceable in fantasy land um he's he's kept justin jefferson up on his platform um and, and certainly justin jefferson has earned being on that platform but you know the ghost of adam thielen you know had 107 targets and i don't think he's peak target earning adam thielen at this point 
Um, so at the very least, I think there's triple digit targets for Addison right off the rip. But I don't, I don't know that we can say that about, you know, JSN or Quentin Johnson or Flowers. So, you know, it would stand to reason that Addison could be the favorite to lead the wide receivers. Um, and I think it's great. I think the landing spot again was really good and fortunate for Jordan Addison. Uh, you know, yeah. like sometimes it's just, that's what it is. Um, if Zay flowers would have landed there, I would have been even more excited about Zay flowers. Um, so even though I am pretty pumped about him, so I think Addison not having to be the Batman and being the Robin, I think is perfect, especially to start his career. I don't know if he'll ever be a dominant one, but he's a awesome <laughs> number two. Um, so, uh, and then, like I said, I, I have Zay flowers ahead of Quentin Johnson. If we're ranking in the tier, um, it's important to kind of have these tiers to know where you can jump around and move around to when you're trading in the draft, you have tiers built instead of being just concentrated on each individual ranking, you can kind of have tiers built to see where you can jump around where guys are going. And that's, you know, I'm just explaining what ranking in tier, not necessarily the most important thing, the tiers, the more important thing, but for me, ranking in the tier, I'd put Zay ahead of him and then Quentin Johnston. Quentin Johnston has a much higher startup ADP in our, um, yeah. in our ADP than Zay Flowers does. Uh, it's, it's a round or two, I believe. Five, five I think for it's two Johnston rounds. And, seven something for. Uh, seven, seven for, for Zay Flowers. I so, can't even fit them both on the page here, Zay down at seven, seven. And. We sort of alluded to talking about startup ADP and how, you know, it's a good barometer to, to you know, the framework of the value and such. Uh, but it's, it's not the end all be all. And now in these startups, I wouldn't reach down and take Zay Flowers in the fifth round because I've done enough drafts and my information is complete that I know that I could probably wait until the sixth round at least. Maybe I reach around, but I don't need to reach. <laughs> definitely not. You need to reach around. <laughs> Maybe I could reach around, um, a round, a single round, <laughs> um, and, and take Zay Flowers. But I know I don't need to take him where Quentin Johnston's going. And that's why it's important to know your ADPs and obviously know your league mates. If you got a guy who went to Boston College and loves... You know, Boston College AJ has, Dillon. has had a Zay Flowers jersey for two years, then maybe you should take Zay Flowers early if you like him too. Um, or capitalize on that trade back and get Quentin Johnston. Um, mm. You know, you play that either way. But, um, you know, I, I, I love Zay Flowers. I, the unknown of Baltimore is 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 actually kind of nice. It's nice that I know that it's not going to be a sleepy, uh, exposed Roman system anymore. We're going to wide put a bunch of dudes out it's going to be like Lamar back in college it's going to be yeah I think at this point I think for when Lamar came in and what Roman was doing I think it was awesome for Lamar Jackson to to get that and then I think it just grew uh old and dusty as Ro Roman has done that everywhere he went basically after a few years it's like a Roman gets, candle you get a couple of pops yeah. and then it's dead it gets kind of stale so now we have uh Munkin in there who has been in the NFL and back into college um and now back out here and, and nothing but great things about Zay uh, Bateman already kind of injections in the foot on the pup off the pup. So, um, I think Zay flowers is going to get a great opportunity and he's going to have plenty of splashy plays. And if we're going to talk about system, how can you not be excited about the system that Quentin Johnston just landed in? I mean, this is a really exciting tier, uh, to be in, you know, you're, you're all the way down to your ninth pick. Um, and you're, you're still in a, in a really good situation here where I, you know i'm not really upset about any guy that i've gotten so far in this draft but quentin johnston landing in in the la scene there herbert now today getting a long-term deal tied up mm -hmm. for a long time over there so no even consideration of that so now he's tied to herbert um and he has mike williams who constantly looks like every time he comes down with a ball he fell from a helicopter mm -hmm. um with, and, no parachute. with no parachute or jumped off a catwalk and landed on the stage um <laughs> And then Keenan Allen is great and old, but both of those guys are good. They have great a little bit, old. bit different playing styles, and I think that's great for Quentin to kind of learn from. Learn. He can learn a little bit. He, he certainly has things to, uh, to work on, but he's going to not be the top dog right there right away. He's going to get room to grow and expand. And then Herbert was different quarterback from rib injury, pre-injury, post-rib injury, um, as far as attacking downfield. Lombardi's out of there. Insert Kellen Moore, who perennially had Dallas if Dak was starting in the top five of a lot of offensive categories, and they're all going to be super hyped analytics. That the you know loose butthole with analytics over there, they're just going to be sliding in and out, uh, just super excited at a lot, medium pace. So much lube, they're just analytics everywhere. They're going to be throwing the shit out of the ball. They're going to be attacking deep, um, and they have you know now they have some depth at wide receiver and 
Palmer's still there and Gerald Everett's still there. And obviously Eckler is a phenomenal pass catcher. So lots of fun, good weapons, offensive line, uh, pretty decent uh, over there as well. So great system for, for um, Johnson as well. So uh, that wraps up that tier. All right, let's get on to the next tier. And I know that the tight end haters aren't, aren't going to love it. Uh, you don't draft tight ends this high in a startup draft. It, it could take forever and never pan out. La, 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 la. All right, man. <laughs> Settle down. If if they don't they don't pan out, whatever. But here's the deal for me. We're we're talking premium, and if it's 1.5, I some of you guys will still say, hey, I don't want those guys. 1.75 or 2.0, Kincaid probably jumps up, uh, you know, into the fifth, sixth, seventh spot for for some people. But right now we are talking. Uh, oh Jesus! Right now we are talking uh, 1.5. We'll keep it at that baseline, and I'm still fine with Kincaid, Mayor, Laporta being there. Um, and it's not necessarily um, only based on that it's tight end premium and I want a, a target earning tight end. And I think all those guys can be good target earners. Um, it's the fact that I've had really good success, uh, you know, in tight end premium using elite prospect tight ends to jump up to an already known uh, elite tight end. It's much like super flex quarterbacks where it's really hard to get trade for a quarterback and not give a quarterback. Well, in tight end premium, I find the same thing as where, hey, even if you don't necessarily like Mayor Laporta or Kincaid, to have one of the top three or four target earning tight ends, the the Kelsey's, which is old, so if you don't want them, I understand. Uh, Andrews, Hawkinson, Goddard, uh, maybe Pitts, hopefully. If you want to trade up into any of those guys, you're probably going to need one of these shots at tight ends to help you get up there. So it's a stepping stone to get there. But... Um, kind of going back to to the original point here, like I think Kincaid is is probably potentially the number two target earner on his team, uh, which is why I have him here. And, and of course, you know I really like the prospect Michael Mayer, who has just been kind of poo pooed on a little bit because the RAS score wasn't any good, um, was just a darling for a long time, and I'm still in there. I mean, you're talking about Hunter Renfro maybe getting the axe or traded, and then it's Devonte Adams, and it's and it's. Jacoby Myers and that's it um so you know I I think we we've seen McDaniels have success with tight ends um and I think uh you know for Mayer to come in I think he's going to be a lot more relevant right off the rip than a lot of people are giving him credit for um I, I think he's he's also a really good player gives him some size and some girth in the red zone as well um so and then Laporta you know obviously uh getting some love with the Lions there. You could say, hey, well, they didn't really use Hawkinson a ton there late. I don't really know what was going on there. But again, Ben Johnson drafting another tight end. And you're going to have Jamison Williams out for the first six weeks. We don't really know who the number two target earner on that team is going to be. Could it be Khalif Raymond? Sure. Is it? Could it be? Which, you know, he's fine. Could it be Josh Reynolds? Sure. Maybe. They just traded for Denzel Mims. We'll see. Could be Gibbs. But there's a good, real good chance, every chance that anybody's writing anything about the Lions, it's how good Laporta looks. Um, so worst case scenario, you, you grab it and, and capitalize on the hype and, and use that to trade up uh, to another elite tight end that you trust a little bit more. So that's kind of my spiel on on why I like the tight ends. And I, I've just, a lot of teams that I've won with, I've had the good tight end and tight end premium. Like, I want that asset. It's a weekly advantage to me. And I get it to say, hey, these guys don't always pan out right away and it might take a minute. That's fine. I'm okay. Also okay with drafting and waiting. Like, I know nobody wants to have any fucking patience. Um, but Kincaid, Mayer, and Laporta are all probably going to hold value for pretty long. I can remember OJ Howard and Njoku and Evan Ingram holding value for a long time. I know that's not a great, you know, showcase of three guys because it did take a little <laughs> while but you know two of them are back um and two you know one of them was a top five tight end last year and Najoku could easily be there and I, I know you don't want to wait that long but I don't think you're gonna I don't think that those two things are going to be the same and we did really see a good Evan Ingram performance right off the rip he, he also has struggled with health right um so um Again, I, major I, I, discrepancy between Kincaid and Mayer and Laporta in the ADP for sure, for sure. Um, but still, I'm 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 throwing all those guys, and, and then those guys kind of Mayer and Laporta kind of average out around these next group of tiers, uh, which is uh, the running backs. I'm going to throw those guys in here. So if you're not a tight end guy and you wanted to move these these late, say leave maybe leave Kincaid up there because that's who's hot in them streets, uh, and if you want, then the next three guys are Charbonnet. Kendra and A-Chain for me. 
Um, and if you wanted to say, hey, I feel I really like a chain, so I'll throw him up in the first round. I'm fine with that. I really like Charbonnet. I'll throw him up in the first round. I'm fine. I'm not going to get ton a ton of pushback from me. I just prefer I'm going to attack that tight end position. All these guys were a whole lot more sexy um, before the draft. Now, a chain still hanging on. We don't know what's going to happen with Miller, but or with uh, with a chain with uh, maybe potentially Dalvin Cook. Coming in there, uh, Mostert's getting some love right now, and they brought that whole running back room back. There is a little, you know, worry of a chain and the size and the and the weight and all that. I, I'm not terribly concerned about it. We're in a we're, we're in a zone. It's already where, been putting on weight, baby. Right, and we're already in a zone where it's like, all right, back of the first round. How many guys of those haven't panned out? So if, if that's what you want to do and take the shot, and that's the most exciting shot to you, go for it. He puts. Um, he's one of the F's, baby. He puts he, the fun back in dynasty. He he certainly does. He he's going to come in at the bottom of that tier ranking for me. Um, Charbonnet and Miller were a whole lot more exciting. Charbonnet could have been up there with with the likes of. Addison and Flowers or Gibbs and Gibbs and JSN, even if he would have got a, a spot to a be a God landing spot, if, if he would have just got a spot where he's <laughs> featured and not splitting with not the, the devil landing another, spot, another really good running back. Um, so, but I'm still down to take Charbonnet because I think there's probably some standalone value. And if there is any, you know, it could be 60 40 uh, Walker to Sharps, it could be 50 50, it could be 55 45, or it could be 60 40 Sharps Walker. Um, you know, I think Charbonnet's good, good passing game chops, uh, a little bit bigger back offers you something different than, than Walker. And, and I mean, look, they were at a point in the season last year where they ended up with not having really any running backs to speak of. So here we are, uh, and they have two and the Seahawks are another team that don't give a shit what you think. And they're going to do it how they want to do it. And they um, loved him and didn't think he would fall to where they grabbed him, I right. guess. And so like having, you know, multiple backs to use, never had these two of good. Right. So now they've you know, they had Marshawn, obviously, but. Hopefully secured a solid backfield with a you know variation of guys. They also brought in um, uh, Kenny McIntosh, and they signed a, another guy. I'm just drawing a blank uh, on his name right now. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, wish, wish Big D was here. Shout out to Big D and his Seahawks knowledge. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's my next tier of guys. Uh, Charbonnet, Miller, A-Chain. Miller got a little less exciting with... You know, obviously, it's it's good news for Calvin or uh, Alvin Kamara owners, but you thought maybe there was a like a felony charge going to be associated with this, which made Miller a little more sexy to start off with. Because I'm not terribly worried about uh, Jamal Williams. I don't know if "sexy" is um, the right word after felony charge, but uh, right, I, I get what you mean. Right, right. Um, so, it, don't stay out of the comment section. Right. So they, so they, um, you know, they've dropped that. Now it's you know the league can still do whatever they want to do, but it's I feel like. There's a lot less likely for it to be a half season or something if yeah. the felony is not a. They could have come down as hard as they wanted to. Right. Um, so maybe it's four, maybe it's six. I don't know. But it was a little more fun for Miller with, when, when there was, was a potential probably gonna bigger be out. issue for with with Kamara. Uh, but I still really like Miller. Again, I think he's he's a pretty good three down player. He's a, a good catcher, solid runner, um, good size. Um, so uh, that that's kind of how I view I view that tier. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I could definitely elevate A chain up. Charbonnet seems like a safe enough pick. Miller, I think you got to drop down a, a schmidge because of the Kamara news. I think I would probably take Mayer and Laporta after almost all those guys, maybe ahead of Kendra. So I think I'd elevate Charbonnet and A chain. And foreshadowing the next guy in your tier, the next tier, I, I could elevate him up over the tight ends as well. Oof, if not a chance. Um, all right, well, let's go to the next guy. It's the quarterback. It's Will Levis, um, and I'm, I'm just being respectful here and throwing Will Levis off to the side because um, I didn't really know where to put him, and I'll, I'll, I'll stop the fall here. When we did the, uh, the industry mock, which if you haven't seen that, make sure you go check that out. Um, I believe I took Levis at the turn. It's not as fun. It's not as sexy. Um, and I, I've, I've dropped him down a little bit. He, he, no, no great reports coming out with Levis necessarily. He's probably going to sit and learn. And at the, but this is, this is appropriate to take him here. He's the quarterback again. Uh, if, if Stroud and, and Young can get the nod over Gibbs and JSN for being a quarterback, you got to throw Levis in here, high second round pick. Um, and had, had some good stuff on tape at Kentucky to go along with some bad stuff um, and then fell a little bit. But, hey, um, you know, I'm okay with taking him here. Again, you can use him as a springboard if there's any positivity or whatever to try to get to another quarterback, uh, if so, if you want to. Or have some patience, and if you're a Levis guy, it pans out for you. Are you ever taking him here in this ADP at 
I was a little bit at first, like when we like when the draft kind of first finished. But no, I haven't been taking him. Um, I would just rather have take the shot on Stafford or, or Tannehill a little later. If you wanted to get Levis and Tannehill, if Levis falls for some reason and I can grab Levis and Tannehill, I think that's a nice little package for yourself a little now and later or or, uh, you know, a trade package. I think I've been I've been saying that I think Tannehill is probably going to be fairly serviceable here, especially as your QB three or four. So. Um, no, not really messing with, uh, Levis at that, that ADP per se. Um, like I said, Laporta is right there. I'd rather have, uh, Laporta. Um, so, and then, you know, there's a chain and Miller, there's Charbonnet, you know, kind of all, all floating around there. Purdy, Mac Jones. Let me get all those guys. Um, so I'll take Levis here, uh, and put him in a tier by himself. Um, and then we'll keep it moving here. Uh, we'll move to the next tier of guys, which for me, is Tajay Spears, Jonathan Mingo, Rashi Rice, and Marvin Mims. Um, and I do have Spears at the top of that tier, which I know some people aren't going to like. I think a lot of people have him at least behind Rice and or Mims, uh, maybe even behind Roshan and Tank. But I really like the tape. The tape was outstanding uh, to go along with a bunch of other, you know, the actual counting stats. Um, and it was, you know, obviously not the most ideal landing spot per se but i mean it could be like we know. had to wait on henry you know right. henry came in with demarco murray and you knew you were gonna have to wait a year i think you ended up having to wait two years and then and then it didn't really maybe click fully his third year until the end of it maybe when he got 10 touchdowns yeah. right at the end get, right get me that bet if if uh, i if, think that it's a great landing spot though and and i'm not expecting anything from taji spears this year i can't help myself taking him i want to take him if i miss out on a chain he's a, he's another f guy a fun I th- guy i think you're gonna still see taji this year they don't and, really and have another backup some... I, I don't think henry will be there on every snap he's 29 years old like he's a bigger bigger guy i think they got him to do operate a little differently and you know before the hopkins i was saying that he might get a little they don't have a whole lot of great pass catchers and and they still don't have a, a plethora um, and you know, they have been going to Derrick Henry a little more, but I think Spears gives you something different to check Henry out of. Um, and yeah. I, I, he's I really get like some running. He'll probably splash. He's an electric guy. Right. I'm just not drafting him thinking I'm going to get something from him. I'm going into it with pretty low expectations. Yeah. And this is a future move, but yeah. I can't help myself. And I, I mean, Henry could myself. fall off the cliff this year, you know, and all of a sudden it's, it's Spears in a mix, bigger mix than we even thought. So, you know, anything can happen. Um, Spears, if, if there wasn't an ACL worry uh, for me in pre-draft rankings uh, before kind of some stuff surfaced, which I knew that he had uh, a few ACL surgeries, um, but he was up there with the likes of the Kendrays and the A-Chains for me. I, I think he's he's as talented as those guys. Uh, really, really fun guy and, you know, came in at 201. So whew, dodging bullets. Woo, just um, barely. But anyway, so I like Spears there. And then Mingo, I think he's locked in to, to the receiver here. Um, again, if you wanted to get into that Charbonnet Miller A chain area for me, that 2-1, that 2-3, two, 2-4 two, two, area, 2-2, uh, two, two, and trade back to get the Mingo or the Rice and, and net a second or whatever, I'm down with that. I'm fine with it. The, the running backs were a lot more fun for me. I'll usually go running back, lean running back um, in, a, in a rookie mock um, or in a rookie draft rather. Um, if I think they're semi equal, uh, but I'd be okay with trading back Mingo, you know, again, not a whole lot of, uh, known, uh, commodities in Carolina right now. They're saying there's some chemistry already with Mingo. I like, again, I, I trust the coaching staff. I, I like Reich. Um, I like the, uh, the, the people who he's brought over Thomas Brown, I believe. Um, I, I'm interested to see how they put that system together, marrying those two systems, um, and Rankin and Browns um, Mingo's probably gonna lead the team in targets just like all the other players in the right team. I mean he certainly <laughs> could, has a chance to I mean everybody's leading the th- there's, it's targets. wide open that's what the, really the point is that it's wide open to lead that team in targets hey Hayden Hurst you know could easily no lead that way. team in targets um, and he's free right now I'll take a pie to the face if Hayden Hurst <laughs> leads um, the Carolina Panthers you never in know. targets uh, you know he's you tight taking end, that bet tight end no all but right tight end could be <laughs> Bryce's best friend. So, you know, Mingo has the ability to, by, at the end, second half of the season, you saw Mingo playing a lot more slot. You even saw some inline, uh, excuse me, for most of his career, you had him outside. Uh, ADOT was really good. And then he moves from, you know, the second half of the season, he moves because of some injuries into the slot and inline and around, and they're doing a bunch of different things. And he really excels with that ball in his hands. He's awesome. Um, and then, 
He every other category like the yak, yak per reception, yak per route run, uh, and the A dot even stayed on career high, even moving to the slot that much. And I know some of that was still probably propped up by the fact that he was out wide for the first half of the season, and he's you know he's tough to wrangle to get your hands on because he is big and strong, and he was on the rise this whole draft season because it was a bunch of sh shorter kings out there, and he's a big fella, um, but all, very versatile. Um, so. Interested to see how they deploy him year one and, and the role that he can grow into. If it's, you know, anything like, you know, just s some semblance of what they're doing with Debo over there. I think, you know, I'm not saying he's Debo Samuel by any means, but I think he has an interesting skill set where he can do some of that stuff. Um, and also, you know, I, he was he was pretty decent uh, down the field. So uh, next is Rasheed Rice, a, fan, a favorite of ours. Uh Banged up through this his his season. I think end of September he had a broken toe. Was really kind of limiting his explosiveness. Um, then he came to the combine, I believe, and did did pretty well. Um, and then you know goes to the Chiefs, which you know hasn't worked out chasing the Chiefs very very often here. Um, keep taking swings, baby. But we'll keep taking swings. Kadarius is now having a little knee scope, which you know. I'll, I'll, I'll Kadarius is a ninth or 10th round pick in our ADP right now. I, you know, he's probably going to drop some more. I haven't really been swinging on him, but I haven't traded any of my Kadarius away. Cause he's just one of those guys who's going to die on my roster. He's too explosive, too fun. Uh, unless you were giving me a first for him. Um, I was just hanging on. Um, and, and now we're getting another setback, but door opens for Rasheed Rice and, uh, Sky Moore and, uh, Justin Ross to all kind of come in. Uh, and I like the idea of getting Rice or Mingo here in a startup or in a, uh, in a rookie draft and the startup, really. I really don't mind uh, Mingo or Rice shots in startups. Um, I believe Rice is... Sky Moore down at 13.04. Rasheed Rice uh, a whole round yeah. ahead at 12.2. You'd yeah. rather have Rice? Rice shiny new object? Sure. Yeah, I, I'll take both. Um, fuck it. Like, you know, Travis Kelsey's 100. Uh, it's only you know. 34. He could play till he's 40. He certainly could, but at, you know, you would expect some at some point. Is there's not? It's not a million catches, a million touchdowns, and 1,300 yards or whatever he did last year. So, um, and somebody would have to take those spots, and it's not going to be MVS. Um, so, you know, I'll I'll keep taking those shots. And again, I did I did like Sky more, but uh, you know, he probably had a little bit of growing and learning to do from his father. Um, but <laughs> you know, Rice comes in. Uh, I think maybe a little bit more. Uh, ready to roll now the system that he was in uh, you know they really only they didn't do a, it wasn't a terribly complex system he only did a few things uh, but when he did those things he did them really well uh, had a ton of catches this year and then Marvin Mims the route tray uh, coming into the back half of this thing Marvin Mims route tree too that nothing intermediate right. too big of an a dot never heard of too large of an a dot <laughs> before but apparently but you know Fine with, per catch fine with Mims here too uh, goes to the Broncos I, I like Judy we love Sutton uh Cortland Sutton, the, the ADP is at 12.5. I can't stop drafting those guys. Some people are like, you know, I won't. I will just keep taking him. I can't stop. Um, he's wide receiver 49. It just seems like a good value. Um, if if they can get th the ship right with Russell uh, and that offensive line, I think, which Russell looked better at the end of the season, I think Judy Sutton, Mims, and then Tim Patrick getting, you know, a lot of love. I, I think his parents were tweeting that in or his, his dad or his brother. Somebody was... You know, saying, oh, he's, he's, he's really like the favorite in camp right now. And it's like, dude, he's 30 years old, like, and he's coming off an injury. Like, I, I like Tim Patrick. He's fine. But, like, let's pump the brakes here um, on, on Timmy P. Uh, I don't think he's beating out Cortland Sutton by any means. Um, so, but Mims uh, also, you know, nice. We're still at the 20th pick, and I still like just about every pick we've been through. So, you know, uh, pretty fun two rounds here for your Superflex tight end premium um, you know, uh, 21, we got in the next tier starting off, we got tank Bigsby, Roshan Johnson and Josh downs. That leaves us one more guy in the next tier. So you have to wait a second. Uh, but tank Bigsby was a favorite of mine coming in, um, gets a landing spot. And then all of a sudden it seemed like because of the Travis ETN haters out there that he's the best Big, thing Bigsby ever. got even more like, he's going to take, he's going to take ETN spot, like pump the brakes, man. He's not taking ETNs, anything. His ADP is above Taji Spears. Um, but tank it, it is a good player and i think the receiving upside is is not ha went, wasn't talked enough through the uh through the draft process underrated underrated for sure and it was clear that the that doug peterson doesn't want to have one guy being taking all the carries so uh, i think this is an, a 70 30 to start the season with 
Um, and I think, you know, Tank will have his, his bright spots and sometimes it'll be a bummer for E.T. And then other times E.T. is going to be on fire um, and doing what he does, busting y'all long runs, being explosive, uh, was just a really good player last year. A couple of bonehead drops, but he's going to keep continuing to get better. He's been working on that receiving game since they all said he couldn't catch in college. Um, and he's just continuing to get better. I um, mean, it was really his first season in the NFL because he broke his foot uh, the season before in the Urban Meyer year. We don't talk about that year. Kind of like Bruno. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Encanto. <laughs> uh, so, you know, really like tanking the ideas. If anything happens to ETN sky high, uh, that's why, you know, you like taking these running backs on the back end here. Roshan next in line for me. Um, he's kind of in a tri commit tri midi. Um, <laughs> so there's three guys there that they didn't draft any of those guys. So clearly they don't like him. And it's like, well, they paid Foreman and, and, and Herbert was fine last year. They seem to use him a decent amount and you bring Roshan in. So, you know, we don't exactly know how that's going to play out. Roshan, big physical, seems to be a, in the good ass dude club as JJ Watt would put it. Um, so, but again, a little green at the running back position. Um, was a quarterback, shifted from quarterback to playing running back, and then didn't transfer, stayed behind Bijan. Um, and from all accounts, just seems like a solid ass dude, hard worker, good guy, uh, pretty good pass catcher. Um, and, you know, has a chance to be really good, but we shall see. So there could be a buy low window for Roshan, or maybe he just grabs right a hold of a roll right off the rip and it's, it's wheels up right away or it's just a muddy mess here for a little while until maybe we do have an injury or somebody really takes uh hold of things and then you know obviously we'll see what the progression of justin fields is is like um and you know can we get some dump offs and stuff to make you know a running back a little bit more relevant there uh in uh Chicago. preserve fields a little bit right um, he needs to learn <laughs> dump it down to running backs so then we got we got josh downs uh coming in at 23 uh, was a favorite of a lot of people until he didn't get the draft capital they were expecting. Uh, now he's, you know, you can get him in three, one, three, two, two, uh, two, twelve. A lot of the times. And I'll, I'll take that discount all day long. Does he amount to anything? We don't know. Does the first year come out and does he do anything? We don't really know. We have no idea what to make of Anthony Richardson and, and how the, the Colts are going to deploy uh, the system and what it's going to look like. Uh, but we do know that, we really, you know, Shane Steichen's got a good history with rookie quarterbacks and developing them and bringing them along. So uh, Richardson's in, in State Farm like hands. Um, and, you know, I think I think Josh Downs is is a value here. He plays bigger than he was, caught a lot of balls. I think that's all state. You're in good hands with all state. Nah, whatever. Idiots. Who cares? <laughs> They're all, you knew what the hell I meant. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I like to stab at Downs uh, here. Uh, as many times as I can get it. If Downs is going to keep falling, I'll, I'll keep taking the value. Uh, pretty good receiver. Again, a little on the small side, but plays on the bigger side. And and really, we don't have a number two target earner here. We have Pittman, and we don't even know if Pittman's long for this team. We shall see if they lock him up. But we have Alec Pierce, which had a couple of spots here and there. But, you know, he's kind of – he kind of is a, you know, one, two-trick pony with the routes that he was running last year and being successful with. And Downs comes in and gives you just something completely different uh, to you. So he could Downs could really grab a role and really develop some chemistry with with Richardson and, and just be a steal at that position, or or he stinks and he never gets on the field. But we're at two four here, um, and I'm okay with that. So uh, and we'll give you a couple bonus here because it's it's a tier. Um, I got Cedric Tillman, Jaden Reed, and, and uh, Jalen Hyatt here. And if we're talking tight end premium. Uh, I think Musgraves uh, could move up into this tier. And I think by the time we're uh, doing, if you're doing your rookie drafts like week three of the preseason, which is when I like to do a lot of them because I got the most information I can get and I'm not a fiend so I can wait. Um, you know, I think Musgraves is going to be creeping up into the second round because he's already getting pumped up about the new Jermichael Finley and all Casey that likes kinda. to edge his rookie drafts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but Cedric Tillman, you know, really good, uh, was a fun prospect, battled some ankle injuries, a, a bigger frame uh, out there. But, you know, all of a sudden the Browns are potentially building, you know, a pretty deep offense that, you know, if, if Deshaun Watson turns it around like we think he's going to turn it around here. Um, you got DPJ, who's probably out after this year. You got Amari, who's a little bit older. Uh, then you have Elijah Moore and you have David Bell so and, and Joku. So you have you have a lot of pieces there right now. We'll see what kind of happens. This may be a little bit more of a long-term play, but, you know, I liked what I saw with Cedric Tillman uh, through the tape and, and through some of the numbers there at his time when healthy uh, at Tennessee. Uh, and then Jaden Reed, you know, wasn't necessarily my favorite guy 
Um, coming out of Michigan State, he played kind of both inside and out. Seems like he's going to be the slot starting slot for the Green Bay Packers. That's where they've kind of said he's been taking most of his snaps from. Um, I think he's a good player. Uh, this could be a miss for me. Could be up a little higher, uh, but I, I just I wasn't terribly excited about him. Uh, but I'm 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 okay at this point. If you wanted to take, you know, him over Tillman, or I mean, if you said, hey, he's definitely I like him better than Downs. You know, sure, go for it. Um, and then Jalen Hyatt, last guy. He never was really my favorite, but there's some explosion there. There's some upside there. We're taking we're getting into the third round here. We'll take shots on upside. Uh, I think he needs to learn. Uh, from his father, I think Darius Slayton might might take that role that that might be Hyatt's down the road here, and we'll see Hyatt on some explosives, or maybe he blows the doors off it. But I, it seems like he needs to learn uh, some nuances. And but Dayball, you know, if there's another coach I trust in the league right now, it's Dayball. And hey, did you know they have a bunch of slot receivers? Well, well two guess, of them went on guess the what? Yeah, it's almost like none of you guys pay attention to anything that goes on. That that Wandell and Sterling were pretty much never going to fucking start the season yeah. for the Giants. Uh, it's crazy. Right. Um, and Paris Campbell hasn't been the healthiest guy. And the other two are old slot guys that they just brought in who are familiar with the system. Like it's like they knew that they didn't have good health and right, just right. value that position and signing a bunch of cheap guys instead of paying anybody. They're like, we learned our lesson with yeah. uh, Galladay. Kenny Galladay. <laughs> we're never paying a wide receiver again. Could, could pay Galladay, but you couldn't figure out how to pay Saquon, huh? Right. Fucking idiots. Re- well, that was the old Panthers GM. What was his name? That was the Giants GM there. Gettleman. That was Gettleman. Mm. Um, so, and then again, if you want to take, if you want to throw a hooker in the mix, because again, quarterback, maybe you have golf, you can move him up a little higher uh, if you so choose. Uh, but like I said, Musgraves, Tank Dell, other good shots here. And then tight end premium, uh, the Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker, I don't know. Somebody told us how to pronounce it. Still not 100% sure. Uh, but Are you still going with tears? You could throw him up there. Just giving you some guys at the end of, uh, at the end of this. So. <laughs> that that'll wrap up our you know you get bonus Top coverage 24, here 24 Casey I know you get bonus coverage here um and if you're if you are not doing super flex and you've listened for it this long and you have a regular draft like basically you could drop Anthony Richardson anywhere into the seventh or eighth you know pick here because and and we're not playing tight end premium you can move Anthony Richardson I think anywhere from seven eight nine ten and I feel comfortable taking Anthony Richardson there the rest of the quarterbacks probably drop somewhere into the mid second round um the 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 tight ends probably drop down a little bit. Maybe you leave Kincaid up there, and those running backs probably move up a little bit. Mingo Rice move up a little bit, and I think you know after Mingo Rice, Spears, and the running backs, maybe that maybe the uh, other two quarterbacks kind of come into play. Will Levis drops you know way down for me in one quarterback. So just want to give you a quick glimpse inside of of how I might reorganize that a little bit for. But it's really not doesn't change all that much. You might shuffle the quarterbacks for no tight end or the the tight ends for no tight end premium a little bit and move Anthony Richardson down to, you know, mid late second round after Quentin Johnson, Addison and flowers are gone. If you want to take Anthony Richardson, I can't begrudge you for that. Um, so, and then wait a little longer on the other, um, quarterback. So again, we appreciate you. We got rankings discussions longer over on the Patreons. We got shorter rankings discussions uh, that you need to subscribe on the tubes to get. We got a Discord. We got a $5 holler on the Patreon. We're having a good time over there. We're putting out three extra shows uh, a month over there. Uh, we had these rankings already over there. Um, we've jostled them around, and that's, you know, we'll be moving rankings maybe once ish a month or if we feel the need to in, in season. Uh, sooner than that uh, and then of course we'll be in season we'll be in season doing the same thing two to three times a week maybe one live hangout on a thursday night game or something like that uh, but a lot of fun you can get one of these great revelry or one of these great shirts at revelrybrewco.com check the bio click the link uh looks much like this sign it's very comfortable uh thing if you don't very comfortable shirt if you do not want to five dollar holler and you'd rather have a wearable support um because you like supporting awkward t-shirts that nobody else knows anything about um, <laughs> what's can, that oh it's this dynasty yeah fantasy football it's a misprint I, from a live nudes what? shirt i don't know for some reason they put ff dynasty on there it's like three bucks now they're 25 it's great over there i think you might have to pay shipping i don't know appreciate you guys yeah make sure you uh give us that five star review if you're on the podcast that's the very least you can do we appreciate y'all we'll be here all week peace Hopefully that time it worked. <laughs>